Welcome to the Fantasy Formula One Podcast. I'm Paul. That's Ben. Uh, thank you for joining our conversation. It is a conversation we would be having anyway. Yep. Hit us up on the social medias at Fantasy Formula One Podcast or email us at info at Fantasy Formula One Podcast dot com. And now we are going to dive into what went on this weekend because it was a very, this previous weekend in Saudi Arabia, it was a very informative weekend. Well, absolutely. If you, if you look at nothing else, uh, you know, if you look, look at the results, oh, first of all, big surprise, Max Verstappen won. Right? I'm, I'm baffled. Yeah. So, I have no clue. You know, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's insane. Was it was is this his his tenth in a row now? It's or was his ninth? It's his ninth, and I think the big stat is and this is dating back to twenty twenty three season. Exactly, yeah. and then he only lost like he only didn't come in first. I think two races, three, two Sergio Perez run, and one a Ferrari one, and that was uh, Singapore. Mm-hmm. So like yeah, so Red Bull has run all of the races since the beginning of the twenty twenty three season except one. Yeah, like come on guys, and th- this was Max's hundredth, right? Uh, it was his. It was, oh, it was it was his hundredth like, podium. Hundredth. It might have been his. Uh, uh, might have been his hundredth podium. Yes. Because yeah. yeah, and uh, one of the questions and, was, you know, how do you feel about getting your hundredth podium in only 187 races? And he geez. goes, well, that's that's 87 non podiums. So, <laughs> <laughs> which which is a, a really good cocky, I'm king of the world sort of. Oh response, yeah, no, absolutely. You know? Humble yeah. brag here. But, oh sure. Yeah. But it, it just the the first thing that strikes me, I you know, I didn't actually get a chance to to, to watch the race. I you know, I was able to see some articles at, you know after the fact and mm-hmm. a couple you know a couple of big points stood out. But just just look at the the time spread here once again. Max Verstappen, thirteen seconds ahead of second place, and then it's Perez coming in in second. Then it's it's uh, plus eighteen for for uh, Charles Leclerc, and then thirty two seconds after that. Massive spread of cars. Massive spread. Can you can you point to any one major thing that that leads to something like that for this race? It, it leads to Red Bull superiority. I'm, so yeah, I mean, and, I, I think that that, and, that was a given. But, but like, just even going down the line for there to still be, you know, ten plus seconds between cars. Yeah, it. There really wasn't. There was no great underlying event this race. There was no massive crashes. Everything going on. It literally. The race started. Everyone just kind of spread out, and some of the uh, there's some of the drivers in the in the in the bottom ten that we can talk about. Sure, they had some pit stop issues and stuff like this. But even at one point after the one pit stop that there was, McLaren was leading. Yeah, the McLaren was leading. He got out ahead. Max Verstappen was second. Right, and um, and guess what? Max passed everybody. You know, McLaren yeah. wasn't as fast. Let me pull up the. Uh, the race results because I don't have those up in front of me yeah, right now. I'm looking at them right now. We had we had two two did not finishes. That's uh, uh, Lance Stroll for yep. Aston Martin, and then uh, uh, Alpine uh, Gasol. Yeah, uh, G- G- Gasly. Uh, Gasly. Gasly. Pure Gasly. 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 I was yeah. mixing multiple names there. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Something no, something European. <laughs> um, so new guy question here. Yeah. So we have two two did not finishes. Is that pretty standard? Like what, what 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 would you say is the average for a given Grand Prix? The average for the given Grand Prix, you will how about this? Every, my every driver will DNF at least once. Sure. The the most I've ever seen, and I could go, have to go back and look at it, was one of the races last year. Like a quarter of the field was out. Okay. You know they had like five DNFs. Um, the uh. The, the lowest I've seen, like in Bahrain, it was it was a stat that the, the announcers actually talked about. It was the first season opener without a DNF. So usually every race will have one. Okay. One or two is standard. Three is like, wow, there's a lot of DNFs. Five is like, oh my gosh, let's talk about it. Massive, you know, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah mass casualty <laughs> event right there. Okay, well, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, and then there was one other thing that came up. I know there was a safety car issue in this race. Um, and the only reason I know that is because I've got uh, Charles Leclerc is one of my drivers on one of my fantasy teams. We'll mm-hmm. talk about that in a, in a future episode. Yeah. Um, but he was talking about his race results, and he was kind of going there. Was, there was an unsafe, uh, unsafe return or an unsafe uh, pit from from the. Uh, you know what? I'll come yeah, I know. Well, and, and I would need to do a little more research on that too, because I heard them talk about it. Okay. And I know Charles Leclerc was upset about it. I didn't think because I, I did watch the race and the qualifying and stuff. It didn't seem to have too big of an impact, just because to your point, there was such a big delta between uh, second and third. Yeah. You know, but um, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But I could dig into it a little bit more. I'm not sure. I just with me watching it. I didn't really notice it. Yeah, but and I'll come. Um, I'll come back to that when I get, yeah. got my ducks a little more in a row. I'll come. Yeah, we can definitely talk about your question for you. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. And uh, so you're absolutely right. And we're, uh, let's go ahead and kind of walk, uh, walk from the beginning. So uh, free practice, right? Yeah. 
uh, Stroll tapped the wall. So there's one really kind of chicane turn, and Lance Stroll hit his front left tire on a wall, broke the steering rod, or otherwise rendered the tire inoperable, and he went straight on into the barrier. Unprovoked, it was just him missing the car, missing the apex of this turn, or, oh. uh, touching the apex of the turn. Right? Sure, yeah. And it's a little bit of a wiggly woggly. I know that's the definition, like, but it was a, it was a, it's it's a part of the track where as soon as it's a left followed by an immediate right, and there are very little. Like when you look at the the, the in the United States, those orange or those yellow road signs that show the car with the oh yeah, you with got the, turns with the coming turns up coming ahead. Yeah. Yeah. like that was like with a, with the a squiggles by the tires. That's what this was, and other drivers had missed that sharp left and there was actually a runoff what we would consider a runoff in aviation so that if you miss the left and you miss the right if you miss navigate it you don't hit the wall ahead of you right gotcha. you can go yeah, off yeah, yeah, and there's yeah. a number of drivers that overran that and if there had been a wall there they would have crashed into it or for those of us who aren't in aviation if you've been on a long road trip and you see those those, exactly. run, those runaway those runaway semi truck yeah. paths when you're yeah. on like a mountain road exactly one of those gotcha this is basically a, and it appears to be built into the turn if you're looking for it you're like oh that's just like those you know a, a break fire runoffs right yeah so he basically tried to cut the turn so tight he had less of a tur- left he had less of a turn right yeah he hit his tire on the wall and it put him in through the runoff into the barrier the reason why that's important is because he costs his uh his value let me pull him up where's my team here we go because so i have him on my team and we're going to talk about why i have him on my team here in a second but I put Lance Stroll on my team, and his value is 11, was over eleven million dollars. It was eleven point two. Yeah. And in free practice, he puts his car into the wall. I, I picked him up last week as yep. well because you know I, I cleared up some money when I was changing out my constructors, and I was like, oh, I can upgrade my draw. Oh, oh, there we shoot. go. Shoot. Yeah. And so the and the issue with crashing in free practice, it doesn't cost you anything. But now your team, instead of now, first off, there's a mental part how it's in the driver's head, which oh, would for be sure. in mine. Yeah. I crashed, you know, going two hundred kilometers an hour into a wall after I missed. But also now that you have to rebuild the car, and, and and that's the thing you've got you've got what two days two days uh, yeah it, depending on when you crash yeah you have time to do it but it's still I mean if anybody who's ever built you know uh, something from like IKEA or just you 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 have all the pieces you're trying to build something yeah if you build something then crash it and you buy a new one you still have to build it and figure it out and make sure all the screws are right. tight and all the whatever so that kind of set him back um, and. So and it didn't it didn't happen in the race, which is good. And we'll go over race results here in a second. The other thing, and this part would just put a smile on my face, is this race they talked about FOD. There was plastic bags on the track. Would get stuff would get blown in because it's Saudi Arabia, right? What, and what was what was and, the word? You, what's what was so FOD. FOD? And that's exactly it. So it was one of the announcers used the word FOD, and it's an aviation term. Okay, it stands for foreign object damage. Oh wow! And okay. the uh, aviation term is it's any loose object that can cause damage to personnel or equipment. Yeah. And if you hear about people worrying about putting change inside of an engine, right? Yeah. Like, that happened in the news recently, right? Somebody was putting quarters in Japan. Oh, that's for right. For luck, yeah. somebody was putting change into an engine. Well, the the way engines work is it sucks, squeeze, bang, blow, right? And you have a multi-stage compressor compressing the air. So then you put fuel into that air and it's under so much pressure when you ignite it, it's a big boom. Yeah. And these cars do that in spades. So if you ingest FOD or any object that doesn't compress like air... You try to compress a penny, it's going to shred your compressor blades or the fan blades, the multi-stage fan that compress the air. And then as soon as a hard piece of metal hits these fan blades, well, now it's trying to compress that fan blade and the FOD. And now the fan's out of balance and you'll, we call it hand grenading. It'll hand grenade your engine. Your engine can literally explode and throw shrapnel everywhere because it's spinning so fast for ingesting a foreign object damage or a FOD. So all this, these plastic bags were flowing around and they started using the term FOD on the actual oh, air wow. broadcast because just like aviation, like if these, these high performance million dollar race cars yeah. suck something in that can't be compressed, you'll trash your engine and the car and all that. So there was a lot of FOD blowing around. They were able to get that fixed up, but it was the first time I had heard the term FOD in, uh, in F1. So I put a smile on my face. Excuse me. The big thing that happened this weekend was uh, in FP3. So uh, Carlos Sainz was feeling under the weather. Yeah. FP1, <laughs> FP2. And then he's like, man, maybe I should go to the doctor between. So you have two free practices on Friday. Yeah. You have free practice three, followed by qualifying on Saturday. Well, after Friday, he went to the doctor. He had appendicitis. So Friday night, he had to have his appendix removed. 
And I don't know how, I mean, I like to think I'm a pretty badass individual, but oh, as soon as you sure. pull an organ out of my body, I'm not climbing into a race car. Good. So the doctors wouldn't, <laughs> doctors wouldn't let him do it either. So uh, they had to bring up a guy from Formula 2 whose name is... Uh, Oliver Barron. Oliver, yes. So he is a, which, P.S., if I was a reserve driver for Ferrari, I'd be a little offended right now if I was uh, Mr. Schumacher. I think Schumacher was a reserve driver for Ferrari. Because they left the reserve driver on the bench and pulled up a guy from Formula Two. Oh, did they really? And the reason why they I th- did. I thought Schumacher. I think he's with Mercedes. Is he with right Mercedes? Now? Somebody. Yeah. I forget who the. Uh, I forget what team. Who they. Who Ferrari has as a reserve driver, but they didn't call him up. They used the F two guy. And the reason why is that F two guy had done really good qualifying, the, earlier that day, on uh, in an F two car. So they put him in an F one car, and said go, and he finished like seventh. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's oh, which man. we need to get to. We'll, I, we'll get to that in the race. That'll time, that'll but. be that'll be a a, a further yeah. episode uh, talk as well. But yeah, yeah, I mean, well, here's the crazy thing: this kid's 18 years old. 18 years old, <sighs> and he is you no know, already scored. He has more points than any Haas driver. Yeah, he is like he's like sixth or seventh in the points championship right now, or however that breaks out. Right after one race. Yeah. So anyway, so he got that, and that was rough. So well, let let's talk about that though for a okay. second, because. It's it's incredible. I mean, to to get P seven, yeah. This is your first F one race ever, yeah. So how how much of this is the car? I would say, I'm not because being... I'm and, and, and I'm sorry. Let me let me let me back up and and and, and just preemptively apologize because <laughs> we don't mean to I, offend. I, I realize the lo- the level of skill that goes into into the into these races. The yeah. level of steely nerves you have to have to go upwards of 200 miles mm-hmm. an hour against people who have done this for several years of their lives and you're being you're you're on an international you know international stage mm-hmm. and to be able to p- perform at that level and score points at all and not die yeah and and this is and this is after a, a, a car, uh signs got pulled out after free practice three right uh, he had uh free practice two is okay he got pulled so, so i mean he had one hour had, in the so this yeah. this this kid has one yeah one practice in in a platform that i'm sure he's familiar with from a from a, a simulation standpoint but he's never been in a race before yeah yeah it's, it's and, and to get p7 is unbelievable mm-hmm. but it's remarkable this makes me think back though to so so so, so uh he he gets p7 great job dude like incredible Totally did not expect that, and again, we'll talk about that in a future future episode. But you know, I knee jerk reaction and pulled Ferrari as one of my constructors and switched them out, which was a, was a huge mistake. Um, uh, yeah, and that we're definitely getting to that because I made similar mistakes. Oh, okay, for sure. But uh, that makes me think back to the previous season when uh, Daniel Ricardo goes out after only a few races because he breaks his wrist. Uh, young guy Liam Lawson mm-hmm. comes in. Yeah. And an Alpha, so at the time it was Alpha Tari. Now it's RB. Is it RB? Yeah, now it's RB. Okay, yeah. now it's RB Racing. Yep. But at the time it's Alpha Tari, and uh, he comes in, performs really well. Mm-hmm. Like gets into into the points once or twice. Uh, let me. I've got his results here. So last year, okay, he he only got in the points once. So he had five races. Got thirteenth, eleventh, ninth, eleventh, and then seventeenth. Yeah, but his points per million was very good for those races. Like oh. he was a strong driver to have. Oh, absolutely, and and he. And and a couple of times he out he outperformed his teammate Yuki Sonoda, who's mm-hmm. been on that team for for a couple of years. He's outlasted a couple of teammates. Yeah. And then Liam comes in, does better than Yuki, and then after his five races, Daniel Ricardo's better. And Christian Horner says, "Okay, we're going to stick with with Daniel Ricardo and Yuki Sonoda." Yeah. I I feel like you know that's that's yet more impressive if you look at the AlphaTauri car versus where Ferrari's at in terms of of technological performance. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? No. You're 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 right. It th- this is a very very strong showing by him. Oh, f- and, and for and, sure. But like and it's it's I want to make sure I'm I'm pull- finally pulling up my stats. There we go. Now I have the race results in front of me. I didn't before. Um it's huge. And yes, but you can't separate the fact that he was driving a Ferrari because as we learned last year in Singapore, as soon as the car's not set up for the track, as soon as the car's wrong, yep. like Max Verstappen got like fifth or something in Singapore. Mm-hmm. So he was he was dominant, dominant, dominant. As soon as the car didn't fit the track, done. Dominant, dominant, dominant again, right? Right. So um, with him, yeah, I think the car does matter a lot, but you can't take away the driver's skill. Oh, sure. Like the driver definitely has that ability. And so 
would he, if you had put him in an AlphaTauri, would you have gotten the same performance? I think you would have gotten a strong performance, but sure. I think it would have been yeah, and again, that high. Don't want to take that nope. away, but I, 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 was, I just but, wanted to yeah. bring up like, it has what, to you know, be what, what key factor differences and, and, are there. And for example, as soon as you get, like there's a lot of dynamics into these relationships, so you have your strong driver. Yeah. And to your point, he was able to get the car adjusted and just like him, but he didn't know what he was trying to get it adjusted for, right? So he just kind of sure. got in there and drove. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have to. He d- he didn't even have a benchmark. Of, Ex- exactly. Yeah. Well, so, what is what is my ideal setup? So maybe that setup worked. Maybe the car just happened to be perfectly in tune for him. Maybe he just went. Maybe the Ferrari is just that superior, which I think they are. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of different ways to to look at it. But when you get somebody like Max, like to juxtapose him with Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen. I feel like he has that strong relationship with his engineer and they're able to communicate and work well together to work with the designers and work with the mechanics to get the car to be that, that strong yeah. from a, from a Sergio Perez strong second place to Max Verstappen dominant first. Um, and with him, with uh, the, the new, with Oliver, I genuinely feel like he probably has that skill level on the level of Max Verstappen sort of thing Yeah, that, that once in that once in a generation sort of ability I think he either he just had a very strong race and he's gonna never do that well again. Or if he can repeat that, then I think it's a really strong ability. And once you adjust the car more to him, I think it'll be exponential how well how well he can go. The 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 part that infuriates me about all this is that if literally one of the top twenty drivers in the world hadn't gotten appendicitis, he never would have had that chance. Oh, absolutely. He would have been dominant through F two. Maybe he would have gotten looked at for a Haas job. Sure. Next year, and then they would have put him in an Alpha Tar. They put him in one of the bottom five car constructors. They would try to work it out, and then maybe he would have been good. Maybe maybe he would have gone in Nick, the way of Nick DeVries, right? Yeah. Where he he did fine. He didn't blow him up, but he was also driving Alpha Tari, and right. they benched him after ten. After yeah. ten, for whatever reason, maybe there was political reasons with that. But if you put Nick DeVries, you know, no, granted, if you put like uh, if if you they have to be able to handle the car at that capability. And for example, Nikita Mezepin, who you can question his pedigree, he couldn't handle a fast car. They had to tune down the car so he could actually keep it on the track. When you have um, like Logan Sargent, our countryman, yeah, last year arguably had a hard time handling the car. He was kept going over track limits, and that was a big thing that plagued him. This year, he's doing a lot better. When he went off the track in Bahrain, it was because you the, actually I watched a special on it. His brakes adjusted all the way forward like he he had he had runaway brake trim basically yeah and suddenly his front brakes locked up and he was like ah and that was it and then he had to go and he had to get it fixed that wasn't necessarily his fault but if you put him in a ferrari or if you put him in you know yeah a ferrari could he keep it on the track is it too powerful of a car right with logan and with a lot of the other rookie drivers you expect them to have issues with it this guy didn't sure and i didn't put him on my team because i'm like man this guy's gonna be lucky to keep it on the track right no, he he proved me wrong. He he just kept it on track. He did wonderful. Well, so and, like, and, well, and, and and that is the incredible thing yeah. too. You know, I, I think I've never you know I've never been in an F one car. I think it'd be thrilling. I think I would be a regardless enough you know, if I ever got to to do do a lap in that car. Yeah, in one of those cars, give give me the slowest one, so I don't you know I have a slightly less ch- lower chance of killing myself. Yeah. <laughs> if I survive that lap, I will be an infinitely oh. better driver. Mm-hmm moving forward after that first drive. So, yeah. so I mean, you, you got to wonder, when you give somebody a chance, going from, from no experience in a, in a given platform mm-hmm. to one drive, there there should be a world of difference after that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're going to see it. But, but, the, but the reality remains, you're still racing against the best in the world yeah. every week. Yeah. Which is, which is insane. But you know, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, I've, I've you know, I've, uh, I've, I've done snowboarding once. <laughs> I skate, you know, I skateboard. Yeah. I love skateboarding. I thought I'd be great at snowboarding and, uh, it was an awful day. It was Vermont. It was icy cold and I fell on my face more times than I right. care, to, care to share. And, and if, what I've heard is it takes three times because the first time it's not, it's nothing like you think. The second time, it's worse because you think you know what you're doing because you yeah. ate it so many times. The third time is that kind of that magic time where you adjust and you're like, oh, this is really cool. Now, my I don't think my one time counts anymore because I think I was 21 years old when I when I tried snowboarding the first time and I haven't since. So I think I'm gonna, I, I would have to redo my first time and go through that cycle before it gets fun. And now I'm pushing 40, so... I don't think <laughs> I think that window was closed <laughs> for me, but I I wonder what the what the kind of the mental and physical ratio is for I'm I'm a racer, but I've never been in an F1 car. 
now I have, and now I'm you know, and now and now I'm going to over adjust and maybe yeah. you know maybe push it too Could much, be. and then maybe maybe three is the magic number. Who knows? Yeah. What's that like? And to that point, what's that like called beginner's luck? Yeah. Where and 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 there's a there's a whole like psychology test where you don't know how to fail. You don't know that you can't do it. Kind of like with uh, Tony Hawk and his 900, right? Yeah. Tony Hawk, the skateboarder. And for anybody uninitiated, Tony Hawk back in, I don't know when this occurred, but it was probably when I was high, late 90s, early aughts. So he's this amazing world-class, best in, best in the generation skateboarder, pushed the boundaries of the, of the sport. He tried to do where you can go up on the half pipe and you're perpendicular to the ground and you spin around about 360, like two and a half times. Right. Yeah. If I do my math right. And then you have to land it back on the, you go up in the air, spin around nine times perpendicular to the ground, and then you land the half pipe. And he kept trying to do it and trying to do it. And no one could do it. And everyone's like, man, no one could do the 900. You can't, it's a mathematical impossibility right. to go that high, do 900 and still land it. Tony Hawk's like, now nah, I'm going to try it. And so he was doing it and doing it. He tried to do it at an X Games. And I forget which X Games it was. Tried it, tried it, failed. You get like two or three attempts. He failed them both. They kept him on the half pipe and everyone was still cheering for him. And like all of his buddies, I remember watching all of his buddies were like on the top of the half pipe with him. Like, yeah. oh, you got it, you got it. Went and did it, failed. Oh, man, you got it, got it. Went and did it, failed. And they were just trying to do it. Tony Hawk eventually landed the 900, didn't count for the X Games, went down in history. Everyone's cheering. I'm getting goosebumps just talking oh, about yeah, it. Oh, no, yeah. I, I can't remember the year, but I, 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 I've I, seen the clip. Yeah. yeah I'm with you. And, and what happened after that? Everybody started doing it. Everyone can do it. So here, so here's the, the deep philosophical question of the day. What is more powerful, not knowing what's impossible or learning what is possible? Exactly. Because learning what is possible will change, and it'll only be changed by the person who doesn't know what's impossible. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Or, or if they're willing to push those boundaries. But we're taught in society, every society, right? Not just sure. Western culture, not just the United States. No, this is what you have to do. I want to go be a race car driver. Uh, you probably won't work. And you're right. For a lot of people, it probably won't work out. For all uh, for all skateboarders and all of human history, you know, it didn't work out doing a 900. You know, so but yeah, another but not, another but, example in the movie Pacific Rim, Charlie Day. <laughs> yeah, you know, he successfully uh, melded his mind with a, with a, with a kaiju. Yeah, and uh, wasn't supposed to be doable. Not, but, but he, he did lived. It. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and I did just realize I I had a typo earlier. So Lance Stroll tapped the wall in the race, not practice. I feel like I misspoke. Oh, yeah. I misspoke that. Sorry. I wrote it down under my FP2 notes for some reason, but I looked at the stats. Yeah, he got the DNF then, but uh, five laps in. That's right. Sucked. His, Sorry dad, about that. his dad will fix the his car. His dad will He'll fix the fine. car. Sorry, Austin Martin. We will gladly accept if you want to sponsor the show. We will only say nice things about I you. Will, I promise. Yeah, I will stop. And again, Lance, <laughs> you're on one of my teams. I'm sorry. It's just, yeah, it's, no. it's the only low fr- low hanging fruit I've it got is, on man. you. So. It is, man. Yeah. And I really truly feel that as soon as you step into like a, a race like a position like that people talk like being in politics oh like, yeah people are gonna make fun of yeah, you yeah no but. again yeah so uh, at the bottom of the screen if you're watching this we'll we'll, we'll always have a we you know we fully acknowledge we fully the skill set <laughs> and the otherworldly reflexes of of all drivers in f1 and if uh, and if anybody in f1 you no know, needs a job like if they have a job like you know hand buffing the cards. oh yeah I will, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm your band yeah Got applications you. in um, so, <laughs> so then Pierre Gasly, since we're getting into the race, so Carlos Sainz, we talk, okay, so this is real quick before we FP3, Zogan Yu, Zogan Yu, sorry, yeah. I was pronouncing his name. He spins in that same chicane. I think it was, and maybe it was a different part, but he, so, and, and I watched specials about it to try and get educated in F1. There's so much power in the car. You can't break while you turn. Mostly you want to break before you turn, right? Because if you break and turn your car, your tires are going to skid. So you want to break and then accelerate and whatever. Whatever happened, his rear end got loose and he spun around and he put it into the barrier during practice. Yeah. Trashed his car. They had to rebuild a new one between free practice three and qualifying. And I'm watching this. I'm watching the time tick down. Yeah. And I'm like, he's not going to be able to get it to get on the course. He normally gets nine. He got nine points the first season or the first race or something like that. I was like, you know what? Do I want to keep a guy rolling in if you don't? put a Q1 qualifying timeout, you can't move on to Q2 and you get negative five points. Yep. So I'm like, well, do I want to use my change to swap him out? I did. I swapped him out for Lance Stroll. So uh, I missed the negative five points and he ended up, you no, know, be still being, I think, negative one for the week or yeah, for, uh, let me go. No, yeah, Lance Stroll is, yeah, he, he, he got one point. So, um, so I got, uh, sorry, uh, joke on you. Oh, so, I got you. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. So how many, how many did he get? Uh, uh, 
how come it keeps logging me out? I need to work with that. But anyway, so Joe and you, I think he got like negative one or he oh, got a few. He wasn't bad. But so I tried to avoid that and tried to put Lance Stroll in. And then Lance Stroll ends up finding the wall really early on. So I went hardcore negative points. Oh, um, no. How come? Yeah, Jogan Yu is negative two points. Are we talking fantasy or are we talking actual Oh, uh, we're talking results? fantasy, actual okay. fantasy. Yeah, because Jogan Yu, he was bottom 10. He didn't get. Yeah, so neg- negative two points for Jogan Yu if he was yeah. on your team. So, and so I would have, but then ne- Lance Stroll gave me negative 18 because mm-hmm. he got that negative 20 for DNFing the race. And this, again, drives home the point and and we're not i'm not going into we're not going to start dissecting all that yet no but this just drives home the point that as soon as you get dnfs that really sucks yep um anyway so that that was my mistake i was well but the thing is it was a calculated one because i'm like do you want to have you know joke on you who not qualify start at the bottom bottom of the pack would start with negative five points or do you want to take a guy who's arguably a strong driver at least middle of the pack driver and put him in and i thought i was like man i'm really glad i did this right i did this right this is so cool Nah, he crashed out. It was still the right move by the rule book. It was the right move. You can't anticipate that he's going to kiss a wall. Well, and, and that's that's you know? that's both the beauty and the and the the terror of this game. You know, yeah. like next week next weekend, man, Max Verstappen could be rolling right along. Yep, he could. You know, lap one, turn one, sneezes in the middle of the turn, and he's out. You know, yeah. and, and there there goes a hundred plus of your points. You know, and and uh, so. With the with the uh, fantasy re- with with the weekend recap in qualifying, uh, the new the new guy Berman, yeah, Bern, he was. I, I'm, I'm going to call him Bearman. Bearman, I will call him Bearman. All right, it's, it's in my head, it's Mr. Bearman. Yeah, he was point zero three seconds behind Lewis Hamilton in Q2, and that leads to my uh, uh so. And then in the race, what do we have for race? I'm trying. I'm trying to make sure we stay in race focused here, and then go into the fantasy stuff for uh, episode number two, which is what we're trying to sure, yeah, trying to do. So no, no, it's fine. I'm just trying to uh, suffer from topic. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why I like this. So, all right. So for the race, Max Verstappen in first, as you put it, as you said, his time. Sorry, yeah, race results was one twenty one twenty forty three. Right. Yep. 30 second, uh, 13 seconds behind him was Sergio Perez, his teammate. And then that is the whole argument of, well, is Sergio going to keep his seat since his contract's up at the end of 24? Right. Because as soon as you have him, we know how good he is. But what, about, what happens if you put Behrman in there? Who yeah. walks in cold and only, and you know, sure, finishes 42 seconds behind Max Verstappen. Yeah, but he's 18. But he's 18 and he hasn't done anything yet. And he's still only, what, 30 seconds behind? Yeah, average age of an of a F1 driver is 25 years old. So there that means he, he may not hit his peak for seven more years. And if he's doing yeah. this well, you know, I, yeah. I, I realize it's, it's, it's his first race, it's week two. But, but. To, to come in and, and, and hit that, that's, I mean, unlimited potential. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If, and, it, if it, it translates, as, yeah, and especially if 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 you know, signs is is done with for. Okay, so this is this is interesting now. Ferrari's in an odd spot because now they've got they've got this kid who who can drive. Yeah, signs is leaving Ferrari yep. next year. Don't uh, well, you know, Lewis I, I, Hamilton's already signed. Ha- Hamilton's coming to Ferrari. Yeah. So what does this what? mean for Leclerc, who's yeah. a consistent like you know anyone na- not na- you know not driving for Red Bull. Fears Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton finished five seconds behind Behrman. Yeah, in a Ferrari. So now, uh, so, so mean, Lewis Hamilton uh, had the Mercedes. I was going to say there's had there's the another Ferrari. conversation yeah. to be had, had about again the the Ferrari Absolutely. versus the Mercedes. I I think Ferrari has a decision to make. Yeah, because do you renege on the seven time World Series, a uh, seven time World Series, a seven time World, World champion. champion, right? Or or and here's the bigger question for me. I don't. I I think Ferrari would be a fool. To first off, piss off Hamilton, but second sure. off, to not take him, right? He, oh, no, for sure. You know, yeah. I mean, to replace him with Berman, right? Because they, they, they've showed their hand that with the two older drivers, Ferrari, I think, is pushing to get a world championship. Yeah. Leclerc is, you know, sure, finished 18 seconds behind Max Verstappen, but next year's going to be another year, right? And so if you're, if you're Bearman, do you go to be a third driver for Ferrari if they offer you? 
he, they're, they're, and wait one year and then with the understanding you're going to take Hamilton's uh, spot if you retire see that and, th- and that's the thing it's do you, yeah do you want to be the guy in waiting on the yep. great team or do you want to go drive for Haas who's replacing their entire lineup do you want to talk and, for Alfatari who's or, or RB yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you so, know oh yeah, and then kick Sauber, which again I have zero visibility on but um so I mean so here's here's what I think realistically is going to happen okay I mean signs is still signs yeah Claire is still a Claire Science, you know, Science is naturally leaving. Hamilton's coming in next yep. year. You're going to have Hamilton and Leclerc yep. for Ferrari. Um, I think this was a fantastic day for Bearman. Yeah. Like he's, I don't think he's getting back in the car this year until um, until someone else gets appendicitis. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, but I mean, you, you've got Leclerc and Science. You don't you don't move on from them, and then you're going to have Leclerc and and Hamilton. You don't move on from them. No, you don't. But. I think I think uh, what you could realistically see is, is and, and you hit the nail on the head. I think I think Haas could be, you know, could go for youth again. Yeah. I, I know it, I know it bit him in the butt, you know, a couple of years ago, and then they had the the Russian experiment. Yep. <laughs> but, but they've they've got a, they've got a new principle. Yep. yep. And so you've got like what what if you had, uh, what if you yeah what if you go for Haas Bearman and uh oh I was just talking about him uh, the the Alphatari guy from last year. Uh, Dang it, my brain, dude. Oh, from uh, from last year. Oh, uh, yeah, Le- Le- Liam Lawson. Go, go Liam Lawson. Yeah, because I mean, man, he, you know, he's got a fire in his belly. He's like, I got oh, the sure. race five times and I didn't suck. He didn't suck. Let's did, do yeah. this, you know. Yeah, because you know, technically, Ferrari still has their reserve driver. They do. And and again, you you know, Bearman's like, oh, I can do this. Oh yeah. And so, I don't think you wait because Leclerc's not going anywhere for a couple of years. I agree. I agree. I think Hamilton's been hurt by Mercedes for a while mm-hmm. now, and he's just like, "This has sucked long enough. I need to get some more podium yeah. time." Yeah, I, and uh, and so those seats are not are not budging anytime soon. Mm-hmm. The only the only weird variable I can think of is what happens. Red Bull has to resign Perez. I don't see how you can look at your and I'm I don't know how their company's organized. I really don't know, but I'm gonna call it your stockholders, right? Yeah. I don't see how you look at your fan base, your stockholders, and not resign Perez. Yeah. Because he's been number two, like give the guy a raise. Happen. Give the guy a raise, make him happy. Yeah. And the argument is kind of the, the burden hand or two in the bush. Do you want to get a second driver who can challenge Verstappen? Right. Well, as soon as you and I, as soon as you're Max Verstappen and I'm Perez, and then the power comes to me, oh, yeah, Jason, you know, you're fired. Ben, we're going to find somebody who can challenge you on the track. Well, then what are you going like, to do? Yeah. Like, you're like, hey, man, what about? I thought I was your guy. I thought I was your guy. Yeah. And so you would want me to be, I think you should pay me more than, you know, $10 million or whatever we decided right. he was getting paid anyway. You know, give me, go ahead and give me, you know, I don't know, two, two and a half million dollars and I'll be your second fiddle. I ain't scared. Absolutely. I'll, you, block, know? you know, I'll get in second. I'll block for, I'll block for number one. Absolutely. You know, let's do it. Why <laughs> would you get rid of me for doing it while I'm doing it well? Right. You know, and then the argument is, well, we're looking ahead five. We're, we're, we're looking, you know, three, five years in the future. Sure. We want to get the next Max Verstappen in there. Well, all right, fine. But what's going to happen as soon as now suddenly during the first, you know, quarter season of growing pains when the, whoever you put in the Red Bull is maybe middle of the top 10. Right. He's not right behind you or she is not right behind you to block for Max to yeah. slow down everybody. Because that's the thing it was a Charles Leclerc. Sure, he's 18 seconds behind. But during uh, like after the after the pits, when uh, 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 Lando Norris was getting past, like maybe 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 the race would be different. I'd be interested to figure out how the race would be different if Max didn't have Sergio Perez to block for him and to be that other car. Yeah, you know, to be that other Red Bull who needs people need to get by. Sure. So well, you know, and here, so here's another interesting option because you know what you're talking about with with you know securing legacies and then and then planning for the future. Christian Horner's in such a unique and enviable position because there there is no. Yeah, there's F two, there's F three, there's F E, right? Yeah, they, okay. yeah, Formula E. But there's there's yeah. really no there's really no F one B league, you know, nope. except for Christian Horner, who's got who's got R B. Yeah, you know, and and so that's where he's tinkering with stuff because you know I think he's doing a smart thing by not not sacrificing the present and in, 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 yeah. in, you know in the service of the future because you've got Max Verstappen and 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 you've got Perez. Mm-hmm. So so he he's been tinkering with R B racing. Yeah. I think what's going to be very telling, because again, you 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 also do have, um, dang it, what's his name? The, Liam Lawson. <laughs> Liam Lawson. Yeah. I, again, I've I've got like a, a, just a <laughs> fog over the name Liam for some reason. No, that's um, you've got him in the fold still. Yeah, you do. So, you've got your next driver if Yuki doesn't work out anymore. 
you've got your next driver yeah. if if Daniel Ricardo doesn't you know doesn't ha- pull a career resurrection. And, and we you know, need to talk about that before we move on from the race. We okay, about uh, RB. I was gonna I was gonna say yeah, I, I want to have a conversation too about about Yuki Tsunoda and the politics of F one yeah. and and you know are, is it serving is it serving a specific fan and base because I now have a very strong opinion about RB and Ferrari. And really everybody now, like now that I have a sample size of two, I can see all the trends. Yeah. I, I have I have strong feelings about that. And and I don't know if that's an, a talk for the race episode or if it's a talk for the fantasy episode. Sure. You know, but we can have it be whichever. But yeah. So so I, I think another, you know, we were, I was just talking about, you know, bring the youth back to Haas. Yeah. But maybe, maybe you, you get, you get a Liam Lawson or you get a Behrman on, on Red Bull. Yeah. You could. I, I'm sorry, not Red Bull. RB. RB. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. cause, cause again, keep Perez. Yeah. I think you, you know, really should. You're, it, you're killing your golden goose. If you don't, you've got a developmental team. Mm-hmm. This is where you put the kids who, who are showing flashes of brilliance. Absolutely. I completely so. agree. Completely agree. Um, so we've been, I don't know how long we've been talking about, talking about stuff, but how, uh, the other thing, is there anything more in general you want to talk about with the race? I mean, cause if not, I think we could do a, a standalone episode for RB just because I think there's going to be a lot to talk about with that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And uh, let me look through my notes about the race. Uh, yeah. So I want to save. So th- a couple things I want to point out. There was. So the the standing order for anybody who had didn't watch the race is first place on down. You had Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez, both Red Bull. Charles Leclerc, the Ferrari alone, because the other guy um, came in seventh. But, you know, like we've been talking about. Then you have Oscar Piastri from McLaren, who's the second year driver from McLaren. Oh, then that's the thing. We didn't even we, we didn't, didn't even t- talk about the talk middle of the about pack. The middle of the pack. So no. we'll we'll walk we'll filter down and we can discuss it right now. Because so, I've got I've got I've got thoughts and feelings yeah. about, about Piastri. So I uh, so Oscar Piastri, P four, his is his second year. And he so he finished in thirty he finished thirty two seconds behind the leader, and then his teammate Lando Norris finished forty five seconds behind the leader. I would need to rewatch the race to know for sure. My notes weren't that specific and I slept last night. So there was a, they played games with pitting because of where the cautions came out yep. and all this. Cause on lap five, there was the first caution when stroll piled it up. Right. And some people went in and did, and did a tire swap right then. And then you had a couple guys who stayed, stayed out, stayed out and, to, to, and to stuff like that. Try, try to gain position, but that, that hurt ev- everyone who tried to do that. It, it bit them in the butt. they were gambling on another, crash they were gambling on another which i mean it's it's lap five right it's lap five I mean, so it, their plan was to go and extend mm-hmm. while everyone else got new tires Every, everybody who if you go into the pits so here's like the basic strategy behind that okay there's 50 laps say again i forget how many laps there were but let's say there's 50 laps sure you the soft tires on this track were good for like 15 laps strong the medium tires or let's say the hard tires are good for 30 right i'm just throwing out numbers yeah you need to change tires once so and you have to have two different compounds of tires by rule you have to have one pit stop and use two different compounds of tires every race so do you have harder tires they'll maybe you get your 30 laps but take longer to warm up and to make you less competitive at the beginning or do you have your soft tires to have the action right there Mm -hmm. get you out in front but they you have to pit sooner and that's like the basic strategy right so as soon as there is a caution on lap five your th- immediate thought is i could go hard tires harder tires do my pit and if there's not another pit stop i can go all the way to the end where if you're wanting to stay out you're like no i have my good tires i'm going to keep pushing and if there is and then i'll go ahead and pit in 30 or 40 laps or whatever yeah. and as soon as there is that second yellow flag whoever pitted is now man i i, I they could have stayed out and they'll need a pit again. Right. Now you have two pits when everybody has one. Or, but if there isn't a yellow flag, then you're great. If there is a yellow flag and you stayed out, well, then you're fine because now you can get your good tires. But if there's not a yellow flag, then you have to pit and take it on the on the nose. Then sure. So, but, but that early on, it, 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 it's it's a reasonable. It's a, it's a. I think it's a reasonable risk, but it's it remains a risk. And Joe Gan Yu and I think I believe I have to double check. Lando Norris didn't take that risk. They stayed out. Correct. And then when their tires started giving out, they started losing places, which is why Oscar Piastri plays fourth because he pitted. Yeah. Same time Max Verstappen did. They, they did the standard pit, and then Lando Norris tried to do the overcut and stay out and gamble on the next flag. And Joe Gan Yu, he came in you no know, twenty. He started twentieth, and he stayed out on those tires as well to get all those positions and gambling on the next yellow flag. 
When it didn't come, he had a pit and he finished a lap down because he was uh, it, it, because he started slowing down and then he went ahead and get into the pits. And by the time he came out, the whole field had passed him and that was it. Yep. So that's like the basic strategy of how that works. And it didn't always work out for everybody. Fernando Alonso finished P5. He uh, he he did the undercut with everybody else. George, and then here we go. George Russell with Mercedes finished sixth. And then uh, uh, Lewis Hamilton finished ninth with Mercedes. Mercedes has a power unit problem. For anybody who doesn't speak F1, power unit equals engine. They call it a power unit because it's a huge electrical component to it. They, at least the best of my knowledge, that's the way it works. But so Mercedes is having a power unit problem. Their cars keep dropping off. Mercedes is having issues this year. Yep. Do And I'm going to withhold my conclusions for the fantasy episode that we're doing next. But that's significant. Absolutely. As soon as you're Liam, uh, as soon as you're Lewis Hamilton and the new guy in the Ferrari is five seconds faster than you. That means your car doesn't have does not do your car has a power problem with George Russell. So we talked about aerodynamics. We talked about uh, high downforce, low downforce tracks, right? With the lower downforce tracks or in the straightaway, you can. There's two components to being fast on an F1 track. Is how one is how much speed you can have in a corner, how much you have to slow down to make the corner or whatever, and that sure. has to do with your downforce, your aerodynamics of the car. The other part is however many straightaways there are. You need to have power in your engine to get your car going faster. Yep. So as soon as it's nothing but figure eights, you don't need to have a higher top end. You don't need to have your car go faster because you're going to, in this example, only go 50 miles an hour the whole time, right? Right. So it's nothing but turns. You have to have high downforce so that you can, you know, go 55 miles an hour in the turns instead of 50 miles an hour. But now suddenly as you put a huge one or two or three big song straightaways, now you need to be able to have that top end. Mercedes doesn't have their top end right now. Gotcha. And so that's yeah. the issue. Their their cars are dropping off. Yep. And as soon as you're only doing one lap, if we go to the uh qualifying, uh race qualifying, you have George Russell is seventh and Lewis Hamilton is eighth. Actually this is not a very good example, right? So even in qualifying, as soon as you try hard, they're seventh and eighth. Yep. Behind both McLarens, both Red Bulls, and the exactly. one Ferrari. And and yeah. It is interesting though that Austin Martin has a hardcore split between the good driver and the not so good driver. That is. And this this week there was a huge split in Ferrari between the veteran driver and the new driver. Yep. But with I Red mean, Bull with which is understandable. Sure. But with Red Bull and with Mercedes and with McLaren, they're they're all matched. And as soon as they're matched and they're that staggered of an order, objectively, Mercedes is slower than McLaren. McLaren is slower than Ferrari. Ferrari is slower than Red Bull. Done. Yeah. Well, let, let me ask. Let me ask this. So, twenty two, the twenty two season. Yeah, is when there were there were the big you know big changes announced. Yeah, and and you know a lot of the constructors took on different methodologies for their cars. Mm-hmm. Red Bull got it right. Yep. Everyone slowly started trying to become Red Bull. Um, twenty three season happens. Mercedes sticks to their guns, talking about the potential of their existing design. Yeah. And again, right now I'm cribbing shamelessly from from the entirety of yep. of, of the uh, drive to survive season which you know i just uh finished the current season which it's it's, it's such a man such a yeah. great a great snapshot oh, of what's going it, on yeah. you know it's it's, it's still a, a year removed and so you've got you've got these conversations with uh total wolf who's the who's the principal for mercedes and uh lewis hamilton who's been their rock star for years and years yep. and years this this stalwart figure and mold you know and seven time cha- world champion and they've ha- they have a couple of these conversations where they're saying the biggest mistake going into the season was trying to stick to our guns and say this design methodology is going to work, and you know, and, yeah. and the potential is there. Um, so it sounded like the big takeaway was okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back to the drawing board and try mm-hmm. something new. But week one and week two, we're having issues again. Yeah. Do you do you have any input on um, on what if if any changes were made from their previous methodology? Um, from from Mercedes standpoint, yeah, going from yes. twenty three to twenty. So they they did a a full if from what I've been informed, they did a full reset back to the end of twenty two. Okay, they wow. they literally took they took where they deviated from everybody else. Yeah, right? they had their big idea. They reset back to that point with a couple of lessons learned. Oh sure, took the lessons learned from Red Bull, and now they're the the prevailing wi- wisdom among F one talking heads that Mercedes is two years behind everybody else. Gotcha. And the interesting thing, the two big concepts Mercedes tried to incorporate is they tried to they put the driver more forward in the car. They try to move, they physically move the cockpit of the driver forward. 
And with that, it does a lot for balance. It does a lot for uh, really like weight and balance with how much you can put behind the driver, how much you can put in the nose, things like that. I mean, it's the difference in performance. You it know, is going going you know going a standard car to it to it to a mid engine car. Exactly. You know, like when exactly. when they made the, that change with the Corvette, I know all the purists were like, "Oh my god, what are you doing?" <laughs> but that car smokes everything oh, yeah. on, on the you know on the road. Exactly. So they so. did that, and they were going for a thing called, and I need to do more research on it, a zero side pod concept. So when right now, if you look at an F1 car by the nose, yeah, it looks kind of boxy behind the pilot, behind the driver, a little bit. It look, kind of comes out. You have your tires on the side, yeah, and then it's not a. It doesn't look like an aircraft where it's cylindrical. Sure, it has like the like shoulders. It basically have, it has shoulder pads on it, right? Uh huh. They're trying to shrink those because the less you can, but you have to put less inside. You have to have lighter. You have to have lighter, smaller things that can do more. And I guess they were trying to do a zero side pod concept car. And by doing that, you move the pilot forward, you move the driver forward, it gives you more space to shrink everything down behind him. I see. That's why I drive at least. If you talk to an engineer, they're like, well, it's like 2% accurate. But, <laughs> and that's that's from a practical standpoint, that's what to me it looked like they were trying to do. Gotcha. And they failed. Okay. That's what Red Bull is doing without moving the driver forward. Interesting. Red Bull is shrinking their side pods. And from what they say, wait seven weeks and it'll look a lot different but they're keeping their driver where it is and one thing mercedes did is they moved their driver back to where it was okay and now they're picking up right where they left off so they're still fine they're still driving a mercedes but your mclarens and your ferraris and your red bulls but your mclarens and your ferraris that did fine last year that didn't waste all those weeks of evolution took the red bull lessons learned and now they're going to be forward of mercedes all year i see and so, and this is a rough, I, I enjoy kind of trying to keep things simple. If you see a car, if you drive on race one mm -hmm. and you're like, all right, here's the results when you change something, the results will be available around race seven or race eight. And it's not a hundred percent because it depends on how many races are in the week. If they're back to back, if it's a big three week break, gotcha. you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But there's that big of a delay. It's measured in months to go ahead and be like, we have this issue, let the engineers fix it, come up with the part, test it, make sure it'll work, go ahead and make it, yeah. put it on the car, and see if it actually works and in real life. I hope, the, hope the driver hope keeps, God, keeps the car yeah. on the road long enough yeah. to actually let us gauge whether exactly. this change worked. So it, there's that big of a thing. So gotcha. after race one, come race seven or race eight, is when you expect them to be able to incorporate the lessons they learned at the beginning of the season in training. I gotcha. After race seven, race eight... Then it goes to the mid-season break before they can put new stuff on. Yep. Then they'll try it the, right before the mid-season break. And then when they come back from the mid-season break, or maybe there's that'll be that'll be the next evolution time, you can go with modified. Uh, you can put the new modifications on your car. And that was when McLaren took off last year. Gotcha. So there are there are cycles of evolution. And yeah. what that means for us as a fantasy people as fantasy teams, if the cars stink right now. They're going to stink for the next five or six races. I Done. hear what you're saying, yeah. And we'll go over that in a minute, but uh, it's worth putting here is that right now Mercedes is slow. Red Bull is fast. Ferrari is fast. McLaren's not bad. Yep. That will be true for the next five races. Gotcha. So we need to make the switches. And then as soon as... Wait you, till you see something good happen for wait, Mercedes. Once you see something good happen for Mercedes and everyone's confident about it, and then you see it happen again and it's repeatable... Then you go ahead and you make your switch. You can make your switch immediately if you want, but then you get a little bit knee jerk in it. Okay, so th the fantasy lesson for this episode is, you can have faith in something. Yep, that's not going to translate into points. You know, being able to say "I told you so" five weeks down the line won't do you any good no. for, the, for these coming four weeks. Exactly. So exactly. So maybe will and we'll and I'm getting to the punchline of the next podcast. Will Mercedes do better? Absolutely. And as soon as they start to pull it out in ten races, yeah. And you're like, man, I knew I had it by then for the game. If you want to play Fantasy F1 to represent your team, then yeah, keep them. Yeah. If you want to play Fantasy F1 to win, keep don't keep them because they're going to decrease in value while everyone else increases. Right. You need to get on the teams. If you're playing the stock market about it, you have to get on the teams, ride that value up. And then when Mercedes starts to climb, you can divest whoever you're in, get on Mercedes, right. which we'll get to there in so, a minute. Yeah. So, so pick... Pick your constructors based on performance and then gauge whether that performance was based on whether they did something good yep. or whether everyone else did something bad. Exactly. So you, 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 want a t you, you want a constructor that does things good. The language, the term for that in F1 is on merit. If they win on merit, if yeah. they do well on merit, fine. 
if they do if, if one car is left in the pack and exactly. wins that <laughs> and then wins that race like that I, and i love it i forget which year it was but it was the indy 500 i told, I told you about this right the indy 500 there was a uh, a wreck right after or there's for some reason the entire field went to pit like two laps from the end oh wow number 36 or whoever was in the back of the indy 500 field was like just, nope i'm not doing powered it. through YOLO. It. yeah he powered through it everybody else went in got fuel did you just single-handedly said, bring back yolo i did single-handedly wow. bring back yolo you're like, welcome feels, america it feels like 2013 again. it does yeah and the guy ran out of gas coming out of turn four at the indy 500 and coasted across the finish line and won the indy 500 out of gas under no power crazy because he but he was he, that far he ahead i gamble he could gamble yeah. everybody else looked at it like we don't have the fuel for it and this guy's like i'm last so i'm gonna go ahead anyway and he gambled looking like a fool and being the guy who ran out of fuel in an indy car in the indy 500 yeah he risked that and won but did he win it on merit no, no. if the if the if the caution had been three or three laps earlier that would have been it but it sure. worked so is the but is the skill the ability to look at the situation and know what the gamble is but I gotta say that guy. Ah. That guy probably had a hell of a week. Yeah. Well, I, oh, absolutely. Are you kidding? I would put. I would get tattooed on my chest. Oh, oh, for sure. I'm an Indy 500 winner. Yeah. Kiss my behind. Yeah. You know. All right. So going back through this, so we have both of the, uh, uh, both so going back to the finish up. What we're talking about with the race, four results. Lewis Hamilton, Lando Norris. That was just the the pitting issue. Yeah. And uh, and he ran out of tires and all that. Um, I sincerely put him if he had if he had pitted with Oscar, he would have been ahead of Oscar. He would have been P four, uh, sorry P five. Nico Hulkenberg, the good old Haas, got a point. Got a point, hey. man. And he got that point on merit. Now you can argue that Lance Stroll would have had that point if he hadn't hit the wall. But I don't know. I, I don't like to sit here and say say that. Pierre Gasly, he had a gearbox failure. On the warm-up lap. One of my guys had a gearbox failure on the warm-up lap. Alpine has problems. They know they have problems. If you look back at their qualifying times, they are qualifying... Uh, where, where is Alpine? They're qualifying... Like this race, they qualified 17-18. The race before, they qualified 19-20. That is an issue. Yeah, We cannot have faith in Alpine right now. Espen Ocon did find this race. He finished P13. He did. He finished a lap down. So he was one lap down, still finished P13. But as soon as people hadn't done the undercut with the tires, as soon as Daniel Ricciardo hadn't spun out and gone a lap down for it, I think he did. As soon as Kick Saber had actually figured stuff out with Valtteri Bottas, he had another pitting issue. Mm -hmm. And as soon as Jogan Yu hadn't hit the wall, I really think Espen Ocon would have been the bottom five. Yeah. So that is something that we are going to focus heavily on in uh, in the fantasy talk, which we're going to go into here in a minute. Sounds good. And okay. So anything else we want to talk about just for race? We might do another uh, special episode talking about RB just because they're my baby and I have now new issues. But um, anything else we can talk about with the race? Uh, yeah. Total uh, total side note. Yeah. Again, you know, everyone's really gaining traction in the U.S. for the first time in, in, in a while. Yeah. You know, however... I think I think what the FIA needs to do, and I got I got my Back to the Future shirt on right now, and you know the the whole the whole crux of that movie is get up to eighty eight miles an hour, and yeah. like, it, it's it's this fairly lengthy um, process yes. in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a DeLorean. It was chronically <laughs> underpowered gigawatts. car, but that that you know that got me thinking. We should do the relative Olympics idea. You know, have you heard the concept? Oh of, that the, yes, the Olympics would be so much more entertaining. Yes. Every every event. Because you you have all these obscure these obscure sports, yeah. But if you put an average Joe against the Olympians, yes, you would you would have a such a new appreciation for even the weirdest sports like like the biathlon, right? Again, again, I'm not throwing shade at it. It's it's crazy. You're skiing with guns, but put a regular dude or or, or woman against the, yeah. the the Olympians just to show how insanely difficult mm -hmm. this weird sport is. Absolutely, I would watch every event always. Do that with f1. f1 oh can you imagine let you know build a single lane inside track so you've got you've got a smaller track in in a relatively fast car yeah like you watch f1 now it's like oh look the cars are going fast but i do the same thing if i'm watching if, if i if i throw on nascar oh look the cars are going fast yeah if i'm if i'm watching a street race oh look the cars are going fast 
but put a a a relatively fast streetcar on an inside track and just see yep. how many minutes they need at the end of the race just to finish. And to that point, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, that's 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 the crux of what I was going to say. I, I think you should have the pole, the two front drivers, be in all white cars. People pulled out of the stands. Have them sit there and just let them drive on the actual race. Yeah, because of the like the reflexes these drivers have and how aggressive they are at the beginning. Uh huh. Five red lights, lights out. Everyone will just drive past them, or they'll crash into the wall. Like, right. yeah, just watch it and watch them. Be like, hey, you need you can't you put bumpers on their cars, you know, so that way sure. whatever. Do your inside track idea. That's actually better with bumpers on it. Yeah, and just watch them try to keep the thing pointy nose forward. Absolutely. And what? Yeah, no, I completely and then agree. For for a fantasy element of it too. You can pick you can pick the the inside car under the condition that if they pass a single car, not not in cases of, of did not finishes. Yeah. But if they pass someone, it like it's an automatic 160 points. Yeah. Like pass one car. <laughs> one car. That does finish. Yeah. Boom, like 160 points. Yeah. And and and, and, and you know and, and Godspeed to you. Exactly. Yeah. Um yeah. I, I would watch every race, you know, because because you would just see, holy crap, these cars are so fast, and the the way they corner, it's it's insane. Yeah. So the uh, and the last note about your about the uh, was it what do you call the Olympics? Uh, the, the relative the Olympics, relative yeah. Olympics. The the two events I always think about with that is for women's it's the beam, how they they jump onto the balance beam. Oh yeah. And I'm like, nah, they just fall. Off. And for men, it's the one where they're like the rings where like they're holding onto the rings. Oh sure. yeah. And it's like, can you imagine any guy who's like, man, I'm pretty strong. I could do the iron. I cross. could do the iron cross. Yeah. It's like, do it. You know, I tried, I did a, uh, a few years back. I did one of the, uh, the, uh, Iron Man, not Iron Man triathlon, but the, uh, the Spartan race. Oh yeah. And it was like, you have to swing along on these monkey like, bars. Like, oh, that'll be fun. No. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. But okay. Anyway. So, all right, cool. Well, Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time when we discuss the fantasy stuff. Absolutely. Cheers. All right.